And there is pushback to these proposed changes. Like the health service executive has raised concerns about this mandatory open disclosure to screening services, saying it could have negative consequences. How do you counter that? And like, what sort of challenges do you feel politicians are going to face in getting these laws through and, and yes. implementing this change that you say is necessary? And as you say, that Vicky Phelan and all the campaigners so desperately want. There is work to be done. Of that, there is no doubt. For example, I, I was amazed to find that there is actually a prohibition in law. A prohibition in law, patients are not permitted by law to complain about the clinical care that they get to the health service. And it's in the, uh, HS, it's in the legislation and it's in the HSE code uh, of complaining. You cannot complain about the exercise of clinical skills. That has to be changed. And we need it. And what, what that failure to recognise that people have a right to the truth and a right to ask for an explanation if they think something's gone wrong, and be right told something's gone wrong, is we end up with cases, if people have the money to bring a case, we end up in the High Court and we end up with uh, spending a large amount of money in the, the whole medical legal complex, mm -hmm. the, the solicitors, uh, courts, barristers, uh, medical expert opinions, all of that money um, to a large extent wasted because we know that if you do three things for patients, they're very unlikely to go to litigation. One is tell them the truth, absolute truth, honesty and, and candour. The second thing is if something did go wrong, make an apology, say you're sorry and be genuinely sorry about it and it should come from someone who was actually involved. And the third thing is, and uh, patients and families, when things go wrong, are very altruistic. One of their great wishes is that it never happens to anyone else. So say how you're going to try and make sure that it doesn't happen to anyone else. If you do those three things, it is uh, the, the number of pa people who have to resort to uh, litigation it decreases dramatically, and we know that from other parts of the world. Yeah, you're talking about those three changes, and I think yes. they are changes that everyone in this country would support. But there are some within the medical profession that would still be fighting those sorts of changes. And I'm thinking of the campaigners and the 221 Plus group, uh, who, in the words, uh, as you say, of one woman, um, she told you, I've been treated like a leper when they have gone to consultants yes. to be treated because they've known about their background in campaigning around the cervical check scandal. So with that culture in place, how are you confident that, that there will be that change? There will be a change. This change will happen. The question is, is it going to happen slowly or is it going to happen quickly? I want it to happen quickly. I want it to benefit people. Now, it's going to change, firstly, because the workforce is changing. Uh, the majority of people coming out of medical school as doctors are women now, and I think women will change it over time. Uh, so it, it is going to... And, and, and members of the public now recognise that they've got a right to the truth and want to be told the truth and are finding their voice. The problem is lots of people don't have that voice and we need to change it for everyone. But it will change and it can change. And, I, yes, some of the treatment of, of uh, the 221-plus women is still unacceptable, just as the comments that were... Some of the horrible things that were said to them when, they're, uh, when it was eventually disclosed to them that, that, that there was a discordance in their slides. So, uh, as you're saying, you're pointing to speed now and how quickly change can come about. Do you think this proposed legislation is a fix? I, it's not a fix for everything. It's, a, it's just one part of the process. At, at the moment... The piece of legislation, the Patient Safety Bill, will be uh, compelling, making mandatory open disclosure, but only in a very, very serious instance on the face of the bill. And the list on the face of the bill of the incidents when it will be mandatory is very limited. And really, uh, it only applies to people who have died through medical ne negligence at the moment. But the bill uh, a lot makes it, leaves it open for the minister to add other instances where there has to be open to disclosure. And your message to him on that is what, tonight? Uh, that we need not just mandatory open disclosure and, and that very legalistic framework, but we do need a proper system put in place uh, where patients can raise concerns and expect uh, the health service and expect health professionals to tell them the truth. It, it's, it's all of these things have to happen. There is no one fix and it requires a lot more effort and it requires a substantial movement, I think, by the professional bodies as well. Because at the moment, 
uh, as we discussed earlier, the profession regulatory bodies uh, are, are, are saying, well, open disclosure is optional if you have to do it at all. By the sounds of what you're saying, there is still an awful lot of work to be done, Dr Scally. This is your final intervention, is it? I mean, this is your final report now. Do you think your expertise will be needed again or do you consider it now job done? Uh, well, as far as I'm concerned, I, I hope it's job done. I mean, there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, it, it shouldn't be by me anyway. We shouldn't be relying on an external expert to tell you this stuff. It's plain and simple. Give people their rights. Give them the information. It's their bodies. It's their information. And we've got to put that principle to work in the health service, in the professional bodies, and we've got to stop thinking that the High Court is the answer to all our ills.